Today I'm going to review The Hound of the Baskervilles, the 1939 version. It stars Basil Rathbone as Sherlock Holmes and Nigel Bruce as Dr Watson. And oddly enough, Richard Green gets starred villain. So uh, you can tell this is the very first Sherlock Holmes film to star Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce as Dr Watson. It only runs 80 minutes, so it's nice and short. So with this being the first one that picked The Hound of the Baskervilles because it's the most well known. Battle Rathbone did 14 Sherlock Holmes films. The first two were 20th Century Fox and they did bigger budgets. They were both made in 1939. And then the rights went to Universal Films so they did the other 12. But they're, they were strange then because they set the films in the 1940s instead of Victorian times. And they did cheaper budgets as well. So the first two though were higher budgets and they were set in Victorian times but the, the other films were set in, in the 1940s. So they did a lot of propaganda. It was Sherlock Holmes versus the Nazis. Boo! Where, uh, the first two were uh, really good. They're, they're quite lavish. I used to watch Basil Rathbone and Sherlock Holmes when I was a kid. They, they were always on the BBC in the 70s and the 80s so I remember all my family used to like watching them so that, that was good we all watched them we all enjoyed them and I think Basil Rathbone's probably my favourite of the Sherlock Holmes he worked so well with, with um, Nigel Bruce I also like Jeremy Bretter's Sherlock Holmes as well and also like the new show called Sherlock don't make that now but uh, that, that was really good but I still think Basil Rathbone's the best. And this is a really good film. I, I was, um, I'll not give spoilers away because I don't, I don't like when people give spoilers away to mystery type of films where you don't know who the, the villain is. So I'll, I'll not mention who it is, but it, it's been a while since I've watched this film and I was surprised. I thought it was someone else. And I thought it was someone else when that was wrong. So it, it surprised us, the, the ending. There's a good flashback sequence involving the, the hound killing this servant wench girl. And this is a strange film because um, it's not like midway Sherlock Holmes vanishes. So a lot of the films, Dr. Watson, he does most of the investigation when he's at Baskerville Manor. So Sherlock Holmes is uh, in the shadow sort of thing watching, seeing if uh, Watson's doing it right. This is really good if you like the character of Dr. Watson. No, I do. I, th I think uh, Nigel Bruce is hilarious. He has all the best there uh, laughs. That bloody Watson is bloody thick as shit. <laughs> the sets and uh, costumes and everything's really good in this film. I especially like the scene set on the, the mowers. They go for walks and um, they can hear the howling of the dog. It's really effective. And it's a good film this because it, it's like Sherlock Holmes's logic versus superstition. So uh, like sh straight away Sherlock Holmes knows that um, there's no such a thing as a, this uh, magical mysterious hound. It's just an ordinary bloody dog that's uh, been starved and attacks people. But the other characters uh, think there's something kind of supernatural involved. Basil Rathbone's performance is, well, you could say it was a little bit over the top. But when uh, actors play the character of Sherlock Holmes, I think they have to sort of like be a little bit over the top because the character is. And it's a bit of a balancing act as well because with Sherlock Holmes you can kind of think you know, he's an arrogant know-it-all and like the audience can distance themselves from the character. I should say that's the something or other hunt. Really Watson you've excelled yourself. <laughs> Has anything escaped me? Almost everything my dear fellow. Huh? <laughs> a person to a doctor I'd say is more likely to come from a hospital than a hunt. And when the letters CC are placed before the hospital, the name Charing Cross Hospital rather obviously presents itself. Oh, that's maybe right. Furthermore, I'd say the Dr. Mortimer had a small practice in the country and was the owner of a dog. 
Hey, that bloody Sherlock. He's a right bloody clever arrogant bastard. <laughs> Nigel Bruce is really funny as Watson. There's a great chemistry between them both. It's, re it's really funny. I love it when uh, Holmes pulls Watson up because he's done something wrong. Or um, he mystifies him with his brilliant logic and deductions. It's excellent. When I was watching the film I was surprised because there's actually a, a bloody seance scene. I, didn't, uh, I can't remember that. They am during the film that they hold a seance in Baskerville Manor and there's like a psychic and she uh, goes into this trance and the, the person who died, uh, the spirit goes into her and she's like talking in the voice. That was really effective. Uh, creepy as well but it, it, it's, uh, I wish the scene had been a bit longer because it, it was really unusual. The actual look of the film, it's sort of like um, the universal horror films sort of thing. You can imagine bloody Frankenstein's monster walking around appearing. It's really, uh, I, I, like the, I like the look of the film. And of course when Holmes does appear again, he's uh, in one of his brilliant disguises. And they did do a good job with the disguises in the film. Uh, you can't tell it's Basil Rathbone. He's like dressed like a tramp. And he, he appears towards near uh, the end of the film. <laughs> it's really good. There is um, some parts to the film that uh, I'm a bit disappointed with. The, the dog looks now. Uh, it's just like a skinny kind of black dog. Uh, although there's a good scene where it attacks someone. And you, you say a lot of the attack. Hey, that bloody dog. Bloody hound of the Baskervilles. It's like a fucking poodle. <laughs> Another thing that's disappointing is, like I said earlier, that um, Sherlock Holmes isn't in some of the film. It's, it's kind of just like at the beginning and the end. So the second act he's not in. So that, that kind of drops the mark a little bit as well. However, the film does look good and it it's exciting that it's the first in the series of films. The performances are all great. Not just Basil Rathbone, but uh, all the cast really, they all play good parts in the film. And it looks great. I, I like Baskerville Manor and the grounds and the moors. All that looks good. The costumes and everything and the music. However, I, I wouldn't class it as my favourite in the series of Basil Rathbone films. So it's good, but it's not great. So out of 10, it's a difficult one because I really enjoyed it, but I can't give it top marks. So I think I'd give it 8. 8 out of 10. A great start to the series of films. But the great thing going to do like this. Bloody good film. Get another bloody bugger on. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Subscribe and like. Bye, bye.